let's talk about i mean we've i've only seen one part because bad fate has only put up one part so far on their youtube channel but i'm sure part two is going to come and some people are maybe subscribed to that we should subscribe to I them think, on patreon Mm, it's behind a paywall I believe. yeah no yeah you have to subscribe on patreon five dollars a month which is really not much but i mean sam this this interview is legendary i mean i've listened to the first whatever part it is if it's the first or second one between norman Finkelstein and brianna it's just too funny like i mean <laughs> i feel like anything you ever say I... to norman Finkelstein, he thinks <laughs> that you're not agreeing with him like his starting position is a position of disagreement <laughs> <laughs> but yeah go ahead know, and then we'll set I, up I, the scene what it's about kind of the, yeah <laughs> I, I i don't to be honest i think norman Finkelstein is from uh, new york if i'm not mistaken yeah. i don't know but i think uh, it's bill bear is from boston he's a comedian but he has this thing that he says and i think it's very true for different groups of people at different countries but like new england people and from certain generation generation especially i think the way they talk it's very <laughs> aggressive yeah. it's just it comes across as if they're like arguing with you and they're just like trying to tell you like pass me like a you know a cup of tea or something but they it just comes across very aggressive yeah sometimes. but yeah i know what you mean a bit well i would say just as a first of all it's just great content bad face and even though I haven't subscribed financially to them because can't yet, uh, I really urge everybody to, because she finds, because a lot of interviews I don't watch anymore because I feel like Norman Finkelstein or Noam Chomsky or whoever goes on and repeats the same old yeah. stuff and everybody agrees with each other. But, but she I finds a point of contention. Always... There's a point to her interviews, exactly, right? Exactly, exactly. Yeah, I think it moves the discussion forward yeah. always. Uh, and uh, apparently, I haven't read the article, but Norman Finkelstein has written an article about It's a book, Obama. I believe. And this is a chapter of it. Oh, really? Okay, yeah. I think, but this part of it has been released as article. Yeah, oh, is uh, it? Okay, yeah, I'm trying to get my hands on it. If that's the case, so. we will revisit this oh, conversation, I, I feel, when the sure. rest of it comes out. But so should I just set the scene of the interview very quickly then? Um, yeah, but uh, yeah, I just wanted to point out that it was a great uh, content. Uh, I just it's not a repeat of uh, like same old thing. No, very good point. And it's like Brianna that brings that out of it. And I think we'll get to that even more. But the interview kind of starts right away into it. So there's no introduction. That's why I'm not even sure if it's the beginning or like middle part of it but pretty much based on my understanding norman has a new book coming out and one of the chapters is on obama and i think the chapter based on how i understand the interview pretty much talks about how absurd and i guess fake obama and how much of a narcissist obama was and his own campaign i'm assuming it's something around that and the point of contention, I feel, between Brianna and Norman is that Norman brings in like a lot of things that are, I guess, like on the superficial level of attack <clears throat> too. like in the interview, there's one part where he's like and he had one person um, who was J black Jared, on his Jared, team. Yeah. Jared, I want to say Jerry Vallett, <laughs> but it's I don't not know that. that. It's something else. Fuck. I don't know the name. And then he goes and he goes and say, but for all intents and purposes, that person was white. And then he goes on an anecdote yes, about yes. how in the hospital they actually thought it was a white baby. No, and no, then no, no, no. Brianna's the like, child. The child, the yeah, child when was, it was a baby. The, the, yeah. the, no, no, the child of that person was, the, I think. The child of that category. person. Yeah, I sure. think, I think. Yeah, something like that. So then Brianna's pretty much like, yeah, that's exactly what I mean. You've put on kind of all these like superficial layer of, of attack in your argument. And I think that kind of dilutes it and kind of makes you seem like, you know, you have an agenda or a vendetta against Obama. And yeah, so that undermines your more substantial arguments. But I kind of both agree with Brianna, but also not because you can see the way that Norman puts it. It just becomes... I feel like it highlights the absurdity of like Obama and his campaign, these kind of details that he that he points out and it makes it more fun. But yeah, I don't know. What's your take kind of on the on their point of contention and everything? 
again, it was so surprising because it happens a lot with bad faith that I think I'm going to like agree with somebody and then I agree with somebody else. And he's like, what? <laughs> yeah. So I, I agree a bit with, I agree substantially. It, it, I'm going to contradict myself as usual, but I'm going to, first I'm going to agree with Brianna Greyjoy because I do think if you mix personal attacks with substantive attacks, you undermine your intentions and people are going to be like, mm, I don't think you're, uh, <clears throat> even if the substance is true, I can't trust your, what you're saying because you seem to have a personal grudge. But I think, to be honest, uh, with Norman fin Finkelstein's case, first of all, I don't think it really matters because I don't think like writing, academic work, all of this, I don't think any of this will change anything. So at the end, I don't think it matters. Like this whole argument that you trying because Brianna Gregory talks about communication and bringing people together. I don't think that's possible. So uh, I mean, while I agree that. with her strategy, but I just don't think it's going to, even with, with, even if you do what she says and do best of intentions and all of that, it's not going to work. <clears throat> and like not going to work in a scale big enough to matter. Not that. Sure. I mean. If you're going to put it that so, way. Sure. So might as well just say what you want. That's one. And, and I would say, I do think with Mr. Finkelstein, uh, Professor Finkelstein, I, I feel that's part of his humor mm -hmm. <laughs> as well. Like, and I, I think maybe it would have been better if he had sort of a, like a pair, like an opinion, uh, like sort of Gore Vidal has a series of essays, which I love and I read constantly. Like if he had a series of essays like Gore Vidal, because he has the same sort of biting tongue mm -hmm and all that and then had a series of se series of different things and by the way I, maybe i am being too harsh because gore vidal attacks individuals on such a i mean he's so much even more ruthless than norman yeah. but yeah uh, it's just uh, but yeah and and by the way i would say it's a recruiting thing with M mr finkelstein because uh, with alan dershowitz as well and this is in the in a documentary about him that even Noam Chomsky says that he should let go of the plagiarism uh, issue. He should just focus on the substance. Mm -hmm. But I think he's such a stickler for the rules and for uh, consistency and all that, that, you know, he, uh, he like, he couldn't, he, there, I think that also damaged, like, if he focused on the substance of that feud, he would have won. But then it became about plagiarism and who says what is plagiarism. And I think, by the way, Mr. Fringleston was right. Uh, but Harvard took Alan Dershowitz's side. So, yeah, you know, but no, uh, so, yeah, right. but, so I, I know I'm contradicting myself like three times in the same but paragraph. That, that's but... also my point. I mean, that's that's also how I kind of saw it. But yeah, Norman and his style is so funny. I mean, I feel like he couldn't be a lawyer only because he wouldn't be able to stick to the best argument. He'll be like, okay, I will present this argument, but I also <laughs> I mean, have to present I mean, these five other <laughs> arguments. And he'd be like, no, this one's going to undermine you. You're going <laughs> to have to throw the whole thing. <laughs> no, I have to destroy you. <laughs> it's like, I just want them to die like psychologically as well as physically. <laughs> <laughs> so, but I mean, no, but, it's but really I, made me want to buy this chapter or book because it sounds like it's I, super entertaining. I, oh, too. <laughs> to be honest, his writing is really interesting. Yeah. I, I read it as in a, a bit as a polemic, like as an attack, like they used to do these writings that they would attack an individual. Like, again, why I love Christopher Hitchens. I think there is a mockery in their attacks that undermines this whole culture that I think we're going to talk about in the tweet section a bit that idolizes people, that puts people on a pedestal. Mm -hmm. And I think Norman Finkelstein's writing uh, intentionally or unintentionally when he talks about like, yeah, people essentially not being black, which is just <laughs> uh, Brianna Grazier is like, professor, you're not black. How can you? And he's like, I don't care. <laughs> it's like, I can see whatever I want based on everything. Uh, it's just, uh, yeah, it, 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 yeah, it's, yeah. It's just so he, they're like, they're mocking the whole, I think that aspect of like, you know, because by, by uh, Obama yeah. is very much idolized by many as this intellectually 
uh, capable, even if he wasn't a good president, mm -hmm. that wasn't because he that was because he was a, he wasn't he was too good. He he believed too much in you know mm -hmm. a, a, a bipartisanship and which is not like it's just not true. Like he was quite. I mean, I I, I think before he got elected, uh, Adolf Reed wrote about his politics quite yeah. uh, you know eye opening before he got elected as a no first, Obama is uh, certainly not president. smart so, in know. those ways but he's smart in like the kind of Trump way in a way <laughs> just like a total opposite of it just like his brand and image and knowing what to put out I, I, and, I, and reading you know, the room uh, in that sense Matt I believe Matt Christman the guy from Chapel Tra Tra Trap House he described him as he said like Trump is reality TV American president, mm -hmm. and Obama is like prestige TV yeah, American that's really president. Good. And yeah, he's like yeah, he can give a good like turn of phrase. He can t give a good turn of phrase and stuff. But I mean, he's a smart. I I I I just don't. He doesn't have the best intention. Oh, I, and yeah. he's not even intellectually that. Yeah, I mean. No, I'm gonna and, read and, Mr. Finkel's. And it's all about himself. I mean, it, it is like one point, like he clarified yeah, it very well. I mean, anyway, this interview is a must watch. Like anybody has to see it. And Brianna does get frustrated at points, but I know that she knows that it's no more Finkel's, so but good. she's just trying to get in there. And he's like going <laughs> on and on. The most like the longest answer to then make his point. But one point that really highlights, he's like just juxtaposed like the Bernie campaign. And the Obama campaign. And he's like, what comes to your mind first, right? With the Bernie one, it's like Medicare, you know, it's kind of all these issues. Whereas the Obama one is kind of change, but like Obama himself, you know, so he's like, you can, they're like a great way to juxtapose them. And then another issue that they talk about is, and uh, they criticize identity politics. And that's the point where Norman gives the longest answer talking about how he knows <laughs> some kids and they all kind of live with each other. And then to reach like a final point of saying that, you know, there's all these different kids who have to live together and they've come together and live together from different backgrounds. So <clears throat> African-American, trans, white and all this and this kind of identity politics instead of uniting these people stronger and bringing them together, it kind of separates them. So that's kind of one issue because I'm kind of thinking yeah, yeah, of the but, issues like, that they talked about, but most of it was you. just everything and yeah. anything came in this interview. Hold on. Like <laughs> there's even one point where Norman talked about his like reading habits. He's like, I read every single <laughs> part of the book, the references. <laughs> I'm like, how did this get into the a 20 minute conversation? <laughs> which <laughs> ISBN fucking number. I memorize it. <laughs> you know, but uh, no, I, I would. Yeah, I, I think, for example, like when he talks about, yeah, like that person is, yeah, not black or something like he's specifically referring to it like a specific American culture of like, you know, yeah. blackness and all that. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah, 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 it's yeah. just, yeah, but yeah, I just that's yeah, that answer I forgot. I genuinely have to go rewatch the interview. I've seen it twice, I think. And because. Yeah, it was weird. Like, I don't really, well, yeah, he started with the whole students and yeah, yeah I don't no, know. But how I listened to it a few I'm, times. I'm a you have to keep on listening and then he like brings <laughs> it all together. He brings it home. But yeah, I mean, he but can yeah. say whatever but he wants, be, right? But, but yeah, he's awesome. Well, you he, can't come he, after well, him can. anymore either. Now he can't, I mean, he can't work he at a university. He doesn't have a family it, for you to kill. <laughs> His parents are dead. <laughs> I mean, I mean, unless you're gonna torture has, him, I'm sure unless he has come friends and, or something. Come and take I mean, his house, <coughs> no, his okay, couch that enough. he's been sitting on no, no. <laughs> since yeah, the turn no, of the no. century. I mean, he's paid the price already for yeah, this, this or, stuff. Yeah, I mean, for sure. I can't believe he's not a fucking officially not a professor. Something which yeah. just gets mentioned, and it's. Uh, I mean, he's not allowed to teach. We've done stories where, like you know. You know, we've done a story where uh, he's, was it, well, a high school. Yeah, it was a high school that wouldn't um, that high school wouldn't yeah, give him a job. Talk, yeah. Talk. And like the universities. Yeah. And now he sorry, he does get teaching roles. But like, you know, he like goes to Turkey sure. or it's like, you know, he gets like the kind of jobs that someone who just yes, got their PhD speaking. got. Yeah. Or something like that. You know, like a young teacher assistant, like no, one semester. He, he, 
I think maybe better than that or something, but like not, Doesn't sound not like a pension. Well, but f- I, Hunt, Samuel Huntington, Fukuyama, these people have, it's just unbelievable. People yeah. who have like, like, st- evi- like all the evidence in the world have proven them wrong <laughs> and are basically like uh, just crazy people. Uh, yeah. Alan, I think Alan Dershowitz, that pedophiliac, yeah. anyway. Yeah. But man, but I mean, for sure I mean, it allegedly is so, allegedly yeah. it is so unfortunate and like i really don't condone this whatsoever i completely condemn it but it's clear that he could literally say the same he could have said the same things but in a different style and picked one or two less beefs and there would have been uh, he, he he wouldn't have yeah, encountered but, that many issues sure but, but just but you could yeah yeah no, you're hundred percent right, but a lot of outlets do that already, though, and yeah. nothing. Changed. And you can like, still get in no, trouble. But he, like that's that just and... not his style, I think. Yeah, he just loves. He, as you said, he loves to completely destroy his yeah. scorch earth like argument. I think. Yeah, you're right, though. If and I mean, he's so unique he for being yeah. such an activist and a scholar in the same area. So he's not like an activist in one thing and like a scholar in like you know. Japanese art or something that, that has nothing to do. So he's like a very good point of reference for people, you know, like Norman Finkelstein said this and all this. So any cause that he's tried to help, I think, I think he's helped by through his personality more than if he had a more laid back personality because of the attention that is brought and everything. If anything. Sure, but then I don't know, but I love his style of writing. Yeah, no, I love stuff, his style. So I wouldn't sure. have enjoyed it as much. So No, it wouldn't have yeah, been the same. <laughs> I know he would have had a better career, but <laughs> Poor guy. I wouldn't have enjoyed his writing as much. So. <laughs>